Everybody, welcome to the uh, earliest alert, Derby Talk. Uh, main focus will be, of course, on uh, next week's events leading up to Derby. There have been some changes. Not a uh, complete shocker there. It's more of a fine-tuning, and that's the case for next week's uh, pattern. There's going to be a lot of fine-tuning uh, to be had on this kind of a setup. All right, so let me walk you through it. As always, we'll go in order here. Uh, today, it's, uh, it's just nasty out. Uh, fog and areas of light rain, and it's all that same area of low pressure that is still spinning. Right now the center of it looks to be uh, just west of Hartensburg is where the center of it is. So the band's kind of rotating around that uh, from the south and east, kind of curling up in the middle. Now where we have that curling up right into here is where we could find the potential for maybe some lightning and thunder that could develop today if you get enough sun breaks to uh, warm up into the 60s. Not everybody's going to see that, but um, that potential is there. Meanwhile, for us here in Louisville, I think we're so close to the circulation that it's such a uh, cooler northerly, uh, northerly flow, northeast, eventually going north, that uh, without any sun breaks, I just don't see us warming up much at all for today. So kind of a cool day it looks like, and rainy at times. Uh, here's a wider view of the uh, low itself. You can certainly see how it is drier on its uh, western side compared to the eastern side. So our rain chance is going to go down, and the coverage as well as the intensity of rain is also going to lessen as we get into tonight and certainly for tomorrow. Then we have another one that's rolling in right in behind it, but this one will feel the effects uh, of the current low, and uh, it should take more of a dive to the south and then back north. Now the question is, is this track, this dive, how much of that to the south will there be? Uh, because our southern counties may get clipped by it as it scoots on by. Again, that's Thursday's system. And then there's, of course, another one after that. Let me show you the high res models for this afternoon. You can see how we get uh, the rotation, the showers breaking out. Feature cast, this is the RPM. It's got us like 57, 58. Some of the other high res got us about right at near 59 or 60 today. I think it's reasonable given what I'm looking at so far. If you get any hints of sun, it won't take much till they get over 60. Um, rain amounts, by the way, generally as a grand total today, if you add on this morning, could end up being uh, more than a half inch, but most areas about a quarter of an inch. Uh, now, for the day tomorrow, uh, we will certainly see us be on the western side. In fact, we could even get some sun later in the day, so it's more than likely a day where we stay in the 50s all the way until like three or even four o'clock and then we get just a few rays of sun and we spike up to 65 that's what i see happening tomorrow so the more west and northwest you are of louisville the quicker you're going to see that spike and likely warmer than louisville you will get uh, rain chances at zero tomorrow but again coverage not as great but then the next this one and the rpm doesn't even show it but it is again for guys this is up on by the south so let's get right into the issue for um leading the derby week we still have this front moving in on Friday. Now, the front doesn't have a whole lot to work with when it moves in on Friday. There will be some rain with it, maybe some thunder Friday evening. Uh, at the moment, it doesn't look like coverage is going to be uh, overly high. Um, and it will be fading as it approaches. So it kind of peters out, which means the balloon glow is one issue we've got to watch. I think the balloon rush hour right now looks fine. The balloon glow could have rain, could have issues with the wind. But the front, 12 miles per hour is the threshold they like to stay uh, below uh, even if they're on the ground there. Um, Saturday's mini and the main race, and the marathons uh, so far look good, a little cool and for opening night, showdowns looks fine as well uh, with uh, temperatures in the 70s and well into the 70s on Sunday. And here comes our friend the Big Blue H. This is a decent high if it would just stick around. It does move in and park itself Monday and Tuesday. Good chance to hit 80 or higher for early next week. The question for next week is how progressive is the pattern going to be? Is the high going to break down and allow for all the moisture to the west to work its way in? Uh, and this will be multiple cold fronts. I don't see an area of low pressure like slamming into us. What will happen is a lot of them will zip into the north of the high, but they'll have cold fronts. There's a lot of things I'm drawing, sorry. It'll have cold fronts, each little wave that passes by, and each front will try to push rain into here. It'll likely become more east-west uh, oriented because uh, it bumps into the ridge so the front will look like that and then it fades out and the next one comes in sharp and then becomes horizontal and fades each one of those that tries to make a run at us are, is what we need to watch for rain chances especially as we get into even as early as Wednesday for the great steamboat race and the parade day all the way up to Derby Day um, if the high can stay strong enough all those fading fronts that tilt become horizontal and weaken would stay just north of the wave country just north 
uh, if the high is weaker than expected, they could come all the way through. And that is not off the table. In fact, there's like a little more support for that than what I just mentioned. Let me show you. Uh, here are the models and the ensembles, and this is a really hard map to see on your phone or your computer right now, but uh, generally Kentucky is right here on every one of these maps, okay? And you're looking at pressure levels. This is the GFS and its ensemble, Euro, and the Canadian, which that far doesn't have its operational, but you see its ensemble. This big circle over here is the high that I was showing you. Large and in charge. This is going to be for uh, Tuesday morning. This is when we're at our warmest. You can see the ridge. I mean, the circle is, is strong, good protection for us for the high. So dry and warm. Now we get into Great Steamboat Race Day. Now we're starting to see some changes here. First off, the GFS operational still is warm and a lot of high pressure. Euro tries to break it down. Starting to see that first horizontal kind of front form. The ensembles, GFS a bit stronger. Euro and Canadian show it being smashed, pushed down a little bit. Now we're heading into Oaks Morning. Now we lose the Euro. At least we still got the ensembles of all three. And that's really what I want you to kind of compare to. Look at the GFS. It's still holding on to the ridge. Warmer weather for Oaks Day and dry. Uh, but the ensemble, its own ensemble, shows the flattening of the front moving in. So does the Euro even more dramatic. In fact, the Euro would take us into the 60s. Uh, and the Canadian not far behind that. So the ensemble support more of a suppression of the ridge. Are they right? It's a good question. Here we go, Derby Day. Even now, now once we hit the Derby Day, even the GFS starts to surrender and allow some fronts to get into the area. Uh, but still, its ensemble is still holding on to as much of a ridge in the southeast corner as it can while the Euro and Canadians say goodbye. So this is the golden question, and uh, usually ridges are harder like this. If they can get established as strong as what they look like this one's going to be, they're going to be harder to knock down. I don't, I don't know how much time that will buy us. They eventually do get knocked down, especially this season the way it's been. They will get suppressed and smashed. But I think it's going to be a little slower than the, what the models indicate. And that makes a big difference in whether or not it's going to be an impact for Thursday or it's impacting Saturday. So uh, the EPL seems to be a, one of the drivers here. All right. And when we look at that end to see what you're looking at here for this, you want it to get above the black line. You want it to get into positive territory. Uh, let me change that one so you can see what I'm drawing. Because you can't see it in right now. All right. Uh, the Euro uh, had us pretty negative. So it was you know heading to the parade day was trying to show that we would have a quick break down the ridge at least somewhat trended more positive and certainly does near derby day so there's some hope there but you can tell that it is really um with the epl the euro even as good as the euro is it is struggling so it is not it's got a very low confidence on this whole breaking down smashing when you look at the gfs i mean gfs obviously has got its crazy issues, but it certainly is much more in the positive territory of things than it is negative compared to the Euro, and that's why it's warmer and a drier setup. So at this point, their confidence is low on how this is going to evolve when it's smashing down, but experience uh, in this kind of a setup tells me that you want to add some time to it of it breaking down, which could bias right up to the point of getting to Derby. So I think we'll stay warm and mainly dry a few oaks. It's Derby Day and the day after that I don't have as much confidence on, of course. Uh, that I think the ridge will begin to break down and we'll get some fronts in the area. But no need to get upset yet because this could certainly change. In the next couple of days we'll see a trend back into uh, a stronger EPL and a stronger signal for the high to be in control. And we could stay 80 or higher all the way through the entire weekend. That is still possible, guys. So still some questions here. But at least we know that early next week it will be warm and it will be dry. Stay tuned. We'll see how this looks tomorrow. Love this time of year.